Welcome back to the channel everybody. So today I will be talking about Mason Mount, Drew Bellingham, Ryan Gravenberg and Mo Salah. But before I cover any of that, I wanted to bring to your attention something that came to my attention on Saturday night. So basically I was on a live show Saturday and before I jumped on there was a guy called Martin, a Liverpool fan, who jumped on and started talking about his life, you know, and asked about his son who plays for Liverpool's youth team and has been told by like Robbie Fowler that he could potentially go far as a goalkeeper. Uh, he does training with Becker's coaches and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's pretty legit stuff, this guy's. So he's got this Dubai trip coming up. And, you know, he were pressed on it a little bit into why, what it entails and stuff like that. And basically it, was, it came out that, you know, the, the foundation, the Fowler Foundation covers so much of it, but this the parents need to obviously pay a little bit more. And, you know, they're struggling, you know, a little bit to get the funds together. They didn't ask for this help, by the way. They didn't ask for anything. It was brought on to them, you know, that if we could help out, we could help out the guys that were doing this live stream. So he has set together a GoFundMe, and I will put the link in the description below, and it'll be on the rest of my videos going forward. I will try to bring it to your attention in every video going forward as well until we get this money raised, you know. You never walk alone, guys. It's not just a motto, it's a way of life. So let's show our support to this Liverpool youth and who could potentially become like a Liverpool player. And I'd feel really good knowing that, you know, I've just helped out somebody, you know, achieve their dream. So, yeah, if you can, guys, if you've got anything, quid, whatever, try and put some money towards this. I will myself be donating some money towards this and hopefully we can get that money raised. So, yeah, guys, that's just all I want to mention there. The link will be in the description down below. I hope this helps you, Martin. Um, I know you didn't ask for this. You didn't, you know, you never asked me to do this. I, I said I would do this, you know, on my arm off my own back. But um, I hope we can get your boy sorted out. I really do. So anyway, guys, back to the news that's come out. So first and foremost, let's start off with Mason Mount because that could potentially be a little bit of positivity for Liverpool here. So it came out towards the back end of last week that um, Mason Mount had either moved over or combined his agency with his agent at the moment, sorry, with Roof Agency. Because um, he's looking for a new move, obviously, away from Chelsea, apparently. Or exploring the options, at least, anyway, because his contract's running out at the end of next season. So, this I've done a little bit of digging, and this agency that he's got himself aligned with, Roof, has a lot of Liverpool players and a lot of former Liverpool players and a lot of players that Liverpool have been linked with. So... On this list, they've got Gnabry, we were linked with. Mane, we had him. Kai Havertz, we were linked with before he went to Chelsea. Van Dijk, Harvey Elliott, Jordan Henderson, Conrad Lima, someone we were linked with heavily during the January transfer window. Taiwo Awone, you know, the lad that's gone to Nottingham Forest, we had him first. He's on this list. Naby Keita, little less said about that, the better. Marco Gruick, you know, these players all played for Liverpool. <laughs> Rian Brewster, I'm just going down a little bit further now. So all these players have been linked with Liverpool, played for Liverpool. Dejan Lovren, <laughs> Nathaniel Klein, Victor Moses. Right, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to keep end up going down. So there's a lot of players here, basically, at the end of the day, that have either played for Liverpool or been linked with Liverpool. Now, why is this important? Liverpool have obviously got a good working relationship with this agency. Like I say, there's a lot of players we've been linked with, a lot of players we've had here. So it makes sense that if their rumours are correct that Mason Mount's parents had a sit-down with Liverpool last month and he has now moved agency to an agency that's got good links with Liverpool, I'd say we're in good stead of actually signing this kid. Now, what's your thoughts on us signing Mason Mount? I don't mind Mason Mount, me. As long as the money's pretty much good you know we signed Oxlade and Chamberlain for 40 million didn't we um, when he won his final year so you're probably looking about 50 60 for Mason I think he's really good I do think he needs a change though at the same time I think he's potentially ran his course at Chelsea now even though he's a Chelsea boy through and through but yeah I would take Mason Mount in a heartbeat and the fact that he's now moved agency or joined agency with this group that's got loads of links to Liverpool does look very good for us in signing him Next up, we got the Mo Salah stuff that came out where basically it was that Salah was looking at leaving Liverpool, that he'd run his course at Liverpool and he just felt like he wanted to move to Spain to continue. So I believe, my personal opinion, if COVID had not happened, 
Salah would have moved to Real Madrid by now already. He would not have signed his new contract. And Liverpool probably would have sold him as well, to be fair, because they'd have sold him for a lot of money. Covid happened, all the club's money went down and we ended up selling Mane instead, who I'm told wanted to leave the season before but was, you know, talked into staying a bit longer. So, Salah, for me, going to Spain this summer, can I see it? I can, to be fair. With the midfield rebuild that we know we've got to do this summer, I can see Liverpool sacrificing Salah. You know, his, his stats are good this season still, no matter what's been going on, but I think he's he's probably the high most highly value player we could potentially sell as well. Uh, get his wage off the out of the club as well. And to be fair, Salah's not been as good because of the lack of midfield. And if it means us selling Salah to get a better midfield, we've got enough attackers I think to get us forward. Salah's world class. Salah is the best attacker for Liverpool going forward, but he needs that midfield to be stronger behind him. I would hope that we could get the money to potentially reinforce the midfield without selling Salah and then Salah can just blow everyone away next year but if we had to sell Salah this summer I would do it what are the odds on us selling Salah this summer my personal opinion is 50-50 at this moment in time um, I know Salah's agents come out and said where have you seen this unless it came from me or more then it's not legit but Salah's agent likes to play these games. We saw the images of Salah having that sit down with PSG's owners not that long ago and everyone got excited thinking that they were going to buy the club. Maybe this is something to do with this. Maybe it's something to do with Salah on the move in the summer. Who knows? But um, yeah, I'd say it's 50-50 if we lose Salah this summer. I really do, guys. Um, so where do we go from here? Let's go with Ryan Gravenberch because I think this will tie in nicely with Bellingham. So... Jose Enrique was doing a live stream and he basically blurted out that he's got the same agent as Ryan and he's been told that the deal for Ryan to go to Liverpool is done. It's done deal, it's happening, he's our player, basically is what he said. And then his co-host was like, we're live, you know, we're live. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Um, he hasn't really, you know, shone at Bayern. You know, I think they're signing for like 16 million. His stats this year, 15 appearances, zero goals, zero assists, one yellow card. He hardly ever starts. He is only 20, so he's one of them players that could potentially thrive under Klopp after having the Klopp treatment. Um, they currently got in market value here at 30 million. Um, he does play that defensive midfielding role as well, so it could be potential um, competition for Fabinho, but... This is what I think. This is linked into Bellingham here. Is this the alternative to Jude Bellingham? And is that why, if it's legit, that Jose Enrique's agent told him about this, that she got this out there to put pressure on Liverpool to get this deal done? Because potentially Liverpool have got the deal done but are holding out to wait and see what happens with Bellingham. And she's not in the place and position to hang about is she she wants him to get moved on you know increase his value get him going to a club get him shining again so i think there's a bit of that behind this i think there's a bit of gamemanship going on here um i think that yeah there's a bit of gamemanship between trying to get this deal pushed over the line get it completed and get it signed off whereas liverpool might potentially be holding back to see what happens so let's wait and see what happens there now Obviously, the big story that you might want me to talk about is Jude Bellingham. So, we had a couple of articles that have come out about this. And the first one is about, well, not about, it's from Paul Joyce at the Times. And he's basically said that there's people at the club that are debating whether spending £100 million on a single player is the right thing to do when Liverpool need more midfield additions. Now, when I first saw this, I thought to myself... Is this FSG getting us primed and ready to tell us basically that we've got no money to spend in the summer and that us going to sign Bellingham is not going to happen? But then I had a second thought and it was kind of amplified this second thought with the David Ornstein article that came out today. Is this a strategy by FSG to get it put out there that they're in negotiations now with Dortmund and they're trying to get the price down? Like Dortmund might be wanting to get a sort of bidding war going on you know, they've got Madrid, City and Liverpool. And Liverpool don't want to get into that bidding war because they know they cannot compete. Now, is this going to be a case of where Jude Bellingham has got to tell Dortmund, I want Liverpool and nobody else. Let's get this deal done. 
Now, if that's the case, that's the only way I see Liverpool signing Dortmund, uh, signing Dortmund, signing Bellingham this summer. If we do not get that guarantee from Bellingham, I think Liverpool will pull out of this deal straight away. If they can't get it beneath 100 million, I don't think Liverpool will do it. 100% don't think they'll do it whatsoever. I just think it's too much money. Um, but yeah, the David Ornstein article today, he basically didn't cite any sources. He didn't say that he'd got this information. It seems a little bit of an opinion piece, but the way it's worded and the way it's all kind of gone on, I think that Ornstein and Joyce have been fed the same line. Now, you've got to bear in mind that Ornstein as well was the journalist that FSG got out to with the potential sale of the club. They went to him, didn't go to James Pierce. they went to Ornstein. Now, he's been taught, he basically says here that the Liverpool champion, 19 cham <laughs> Liverpool champions, the English champion, 19, oh my God, start again. The 19 time English champions have probably been heavily linked more than anybody else with Jude Bellingham. And Jurgen Klopp is a huge admirer, admirer. But the anticipated fee, the financial power of rival suitors, and their resistance to entering a bidding war at the level expected has cast a significant doubt on Liverpool's chances. It does not mean their pursuit is off. No firm decisions have been made, although sources with knowledge of the matter think that City and Real Madrid are in a stronger position at this moment in time. It's all down to finances, guys, isn't it? That's the game they're playing now. They're basically, you know, Dortmund have come out a number of times saying they want 130 million, whatever it is, it's 100 plus million. Now, the game has started for FSG to basically turn around and say, we're not paying that at all. We're just not paying it. And I think this is the case of where we're seeing the Gravenberch stuff come out. You know, that's Liverpool saying, well, if we don't get Bellingham, we've got an alternative. I just think it's all linked, guys, is all this. And I think it's very, very, very funny that the guy that Liverpool fans most listen to in Paul Joyce and the guy that also leaked or was told about the whole sale of the club, Ornstein, have both got the same story going on. There's something not right here. There's something that's a little bit... I don't know. It seems like it's a little bit pre-planned. And it's all come after we've been kicked out of the Champions League. And it looks like we're not going to qualify for next year's Champions League. I think it's all a game, guys. FSG saying they've got no money. That's why I'm going down with, with this. Um, anyway, I'll leave it there for you. Let me know what you think down below and the comments and everything about what's going on please give a look to the link as well in the description give the video a like and if you are new here please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything else i've got going on and i'll catch you in the next one